Hello everyone, I'm Alvaro Toralba and this is John Gold with Dan Fisher and John Hoffman about using operator potential heuristics in symbolic search. In this paper, we are dealing with cost optimal planning problems. And the motivation uh, comes from the fact that in the last few years, there have been two main contenders for the state of the art. They start with admissible heuristics and symbolic search. So the question is, can we use those admissible heuristics in symbolic search as well? This is not as easy as it might look like as uh, not all heuristics are directly applicable. In the past, only a few heuristics, uh, mainly non-additive abstraction heuristics, such as patent databases, have been used. Moreover, even if you can use a heuristic, it doesn't mean that it will improve performance. Uh, as recent research by David Speck et al. has shown, even almost perfect heuristics, which would be really good for a star search, can be detrimental in symbolic search. And this has led to the general belief that perhaps uh, heuristics and symbolic search don't play well together. However, we will show that this is not the case. Uh, by using potential heuristics in symbolic search and showing that they are very effective at reducing search effort. Now, we will start by looking at potential heuristics, then uh, at how heuristics in general are used in symbolic search, and finally we will say, explain how to use uh, potential heuristics in symbolic search. So let's start with uh, uh, heuristic search. In heuristic search, we start from the initial state, generate a bunch of successor states, and then compute a heuristic value for each of the states, which is just an estimate on the goal distance from that uh, state. And uh, we want admissible heuristics that never overestimate the real distance because we can use them in a star search to find optimal solutions. But at the same time, the heuristic will guide the search towards the goal so that uh, we don't need to explore all possibilities, but only a few. Now, how do we compute these heuristic estimates? Well, in this work, we are going to use potential heuristics. The idea is that we are going to assign a value to every fat of the planning task, which is the potential of that fat, and then the heuristic value of a state will be the sum uh, potentials of the fats that are true in that state. Let's see this with an example. We have this planning task where we have two light bulbs. Initially, they are off, and we want them to be on, and we have some actions to do so. The first two actions turn on one of the lights with a cost of three. The last action turns on both of the lights, regardless of whether some of them were already uh, on, uh, and it has a cost of five. Now, if we want to use potential heuristics, we need to assign a potential for every fact. So we will assign a potential for the light one being off, for example, three, potential for the light one being on, for example, zero, and so on and so forth. And then we can compute the heuristic value of a state, for example, the initial state where both lights are off would have a potential of uh, three because the light uh, one is off, plus two because the light two is off for a total of five. And the question is how can we assign the, the potentials for the facts in such a way such that this sum is only, uh, always guaranteed to never overestimate uh, the goal distance. And to do that, we will use a linear program to find the uh, values for these potentials such that the overall heuristic is goal aware and consistent, which implies that it's admissible. For, for the heuristic being consistent, uh, we want that uh, every time that we apply the action, the difference in the heuristic value between the predecessor and the successor state never, uh, is never larger than the actual uh, cost. So um, in order to do that, uh, we don't need to uh, take a look at all the states in the state space. The nice thing about the potential heuristics is that we can write only a constraint per each operator where we basically compare what's the potential of the facts that have been added, that are, are new in the state, uh, and the potential of the facts that have been deleted, that were true, but they are not anymore. So for example, when we apply it on, on L1, we know that afterwards the light one will be on and beforehand uh, it was off. And therefore, if we compute the difference in, in potential between these two, it cannot be larger uh, than three. Now, uh, this is basically, this, this difference is basically uh, the, the change in heuristic value that will occur when we apply the action. Oh, and therefore, that's why uh, this guarantees that the heuristic will be consistent. Now, if we look at, at uh, turn on both, the picture is a bit more complicated because yes, we know that after applying the action, both lights will be on, but we don't know if they were on or off. Therefore, we need to take the maximum between all possibilities in order to, uh, to remain admissible. Okay, so this is how you uh, can find potentials and use potential heuristics in explicit search. Now let's move to symbolic search. In symbolic search, again, we are exploring the, the search space 
Uh, but uh, this time we are not going to explore states individually one by one, but rather we are going to explore uh, sets of states at the same time. So we will uh, group the states by the distance to the initial state. So we will consider the set of states that can be reached with a cost of one, the set of states that can be reached with a cost of two, and so on and so forth. And for each of these sets of states, we will represent them using an efficient data extractor, namely a binary decision diagram such as the one shown in the figure. The details of these binary decision diagrams uh, are not very important for this talk. But uh, the important thing is that uh, with a very compact data structure uh, that has few nodes, for example, in this case, we have five BDD nodes, we can represent many, many states. In this case, it's 20 states. And in the general case, we can represent exponentially many states in a compact way. And uh, all operations that we perform during the search, such as generating the successor states, will have a runtime that depends not on the number of states that are being represented, but only in the number of BDD nodes that are being used uh, to do so. And this allows very efficient exploration of uh, very big uh, search spaces. And the way the search proceeds without a heuristic is uh, like follows. So we start with the initial state, we generate a set of states that are reachable with one step, we generate a set of states that can be reached with a cost of two, and so on and so forth until we find a, a set of states that contains a gold state. Now, if we want to use heuristics in this setting, we need to split the, the set, these sets of states into multiple subsets, depending on what's the heuristic value. So if before we had a single set of states represented as a BDD containing all states that are reachable with a cost of one, now we will have multiple sets, subsets of this set, uh, depending on what's the heuristic value of those uh, states. And the advantage is that now we can uh, apply the same operations as before, but uh, in these subsets of states. And we will do so in the same order as AS star would do uh, by increasing F value until we find the goal. And this guarantees that the solution that we find is optimal, but at the same time, we don't need to explore all the subsets of states. We can uh, skip uh, a lot of them. Now, if we want to use potential heuristics in symbolic search, we will need to solve two questions. The first question is how to actually perform this uh, heuristic evaluation efficiently. And the second question is whether this will be effective in practice. Let's start with the first question. Typically, what the algorithms do is to generate the set of successor states and only then split it into subsets. However, what we will do here is a, a slightly different and it's an idea that was introduced by Jensen et al, uh, which is instead of generating the successors uh, that can be reached from the previous set of states with all operators, we will classify operators into subsets of operators according to how the operator affects the heuristic value. So for example, we have the set of operators uh, such that if we apply that operator, the heuristic value will decrease by one. And then we can uh, compute the set of successors with respect to these subsets of operators. And that way we will obtain uh, the subsets of states that we were interested in. Now, for most heuristics, it's not possible to categorize operators in this way. However, uh, what's nice about potential heuristics uh, and that we are exploiting here is the fact that we can do so. And we call the uh, potential of an operator to this value of uh, how the operator changes the heuristic value every time that we apply it. And uh, this amount is exactly the same uh, as we had before in our, um, in our uh, inequality constraint for the linear program that, uh, that ensures consistency of the operator. It's just the difference between the facts, the potentials of the facts that are added by the operator minus the potentials of the facts that are deleted by the operators. And then we can compute a heuristic value for a state just by computing the heuristic value on the initial state and then adding the potentials of the operators that have been added in the path from the initial state to uh, the state that we are evaluating. However, there is a problem with this, uh, uh, and it's the fact that we need to take the maximum out of all the preconditions as we had to do in turn on both uh, before. This basically means that the, this heuristic would remain admissible, but uh, there is a complication as we will just see. Now, in our example, for turn on L1, the uh, difference in heuristic value every time that we apply the operation is minus three, because we will always get uh, that before the, the light was uh, off and afterwards the light was on. So the heuristic value will always change in a predictable way. However, for turn on both, uh, the lights could be on or off. So we 
we take the safe uh, approach of taking the maximum values of the of the preconditions, which leads to an operator uh, potential of minus five. Now, if we apply the action on the initial state, uh, you will see that uh, we obtain a heuristic value of zero for the goal state as desired. The problem is that if we now reach this state by a different path, we will end up with a different heuristic value. This is a still an admissible value, but, uh, but it makes the heuristic path dependent and therefore inconsistent. However, this is just a technical trouble. And the way we will address this is by ensuring that uh, for all operators in the planning task, uh, all variables that appear in the effect also appear in the precondition. And we will do so just by creating copies of the operator for every possible uh, value that the variables would have in the precondition. We will also ensure that uh, the potentials for the operators are uh, integers to avoid floating point rounding issues. And with this, we can actually use uh, potential heuristics in symbolic search. Now, the second question is, will using this heuristic improve search performance? Well, by looking at uh, the diagram I just shown, you can easily see that the number of BDDs that are actually involved in the search uh, increases when we use heuristics because we are splitting a BDD into many BDDs, depending on the heuristic value of the states. On the other hand, we know that these heuristics are avoiding the expansion of some states, and just as, as in a star search. So the big question uh, here is, are the BDDs also smaller thanks to the fact that they contain less states? And as recent research has shown, this is not true for uh, some heuristics. So uh, we need to evaluate empirically whether this happens or not. So we compare uh, symbolic search with operator potential heuristics against uh, blind search. And what we see is that the number of expanded BDDs increases, as I have just mentioned. However, when we compare the number of BDD nodes that are involved in the search, the value is uh, almost always improving. Uh, when using the heuristic. And this translates to uh, a very big advantage in runtime. So this means that uh, potential heuristics are very good at reducing search effort in symbolic search. This also translates into a coverage advantage, uh, not only with respect to uh, symbolic forward search, but also with respect to symbolic bidirectional search and with uh, respect to AS star with the same potential heuristics. We get to have an advantage on coverage in, of more than 100 uh, problems. And uh, if we compare against the state of the art uh, planners such as complementary two or Scorpion, we see that the performance of symbolic search with operator potential heuristics is very similar uh, to those. So in conclusion, uh, we have shown that potential heuristics uh, can be used in symbolic search by computing the operator potentials. Uh, and not only that, but they uh, improve the performance uh, significantly. This means that uh, heuristics can be used in, in symbolic search effectively. For future work, we plan to also combine uh, operator potential heuristics with symbolic bidirectional search and also try to get a deeper understanding on why these heuristics uh, work so well uh, and don't have the anomalies that other heuristics in the past uh, had. Thank you very much for your attention.